This is the next leg of my uh, Delta under Durban and Microsoft Flight Sim Odyssey. Uh, previous uh, legs were Dublin to Liverpool, Liverpool to Leeds, Leeds to Edinburgh. No, Leeds to Prestwick, Prestwick to Edinburgh. And uh, did a fly around the Edinburgh Castle. Uh, it's kind of a side trip. And uh, now I'm ready to take off for. Uh, um, Newcastle, uh, but I'm not carrying any coals on this trip. So I'm going to, and I've already entered my flight plan after much difficulty. I'm going to talk to the uh, tower. Um, I'm just going to request taxi. I'm going out. Uh, well, let's see. I want to go to the west, sort of. I think that's my flight plan. Yes. West. So let's see what they ground, tell me. Craft Alpha Lima Oscar Hotel Alpha with Quebec request taxi to the active west departure. Beachcraft Alpha Lima Oscar Hotel Alpha taxi to and hold short of runway 06 via taxiway Mike Golf Lima Alpha. Contact oh. tower on 118 when ready. I thought I was going to go out runway the opposite direction, runway 24, but which was active the other day. I got those blue thingamajigs over there. Tell me where to go. So I released the parking brake and hopefully I can turn around without hitting a building. They don't seem to mind if you hit the fuel pumps, but hitting a building is a no. So those are my uh, cheating not really there in a sim that's not really there taxi rib taxi ribbons earlier the airport was closed uh, to IFR and really any kind of traffic in that situation because there just was no break in the uh, clouds I was going to take off anyway because it's a flight flight sim after all and so what could go wrong you know anyway it's gonna be pretty dramatic with these clouds and this is probably a 120 mile flight with the way I'm taking off and uh, flying out to the west before I turn back to the east I thought Newcastle would be a good intermediate stop before London and uh, I don't have any particular uh, it's not going to be very linear this whole itinerary I'm just going to go wherever I feel like it so I could be zigzagging all over Europe before I cross the Mediterranean you know head south over Africa and I was thinking I might do some VFR flying to up up the Nile. There's the sun over there. Well, I'm going to cruise at 12,200 feet and later descending to about 2,200 feet. So this is kind of a... We weren't starting very close to the runway, of course, because I was in the general aviation uh, General Aviation GA parking where the uh, small planes go and it's a nice gosh it's a it's a mile still to the beginning of the runway when I get there I'm going to put in one notch of flaps and I'm going to turn on all the de-icing equipment I can find so this is a Beechcraft Baron nice twin engine prop prop plane I'm pretty comfortable with it those are my call that's my call sign Alpha Lima Oscar Hotel Alpha and that means Aloha 
So, uh, hello to all my Facebook friends, the one or two who might be catching this uh, live streaming. And hello to anybody who uh, catches it on video. First things first, lower the flaps, and then uh, get this yoke out of the way so I can find the... Uh, all the nice de-icing. I'm gonna floodlight anyway. No. Floodlight's nice. Okay, where are the, here they are. Interoperative, there we go. Prop, windshield, airframe. Okay, so, that's all done. Shouldn't have any icing problems. And uh, next, to do this kosher, uh, get the tower, and, uh, well. At Burra Tower Beachcraft Alpha Lima Oscar Hotel Alpha at runway 06 ready for departure west departure. Beachcraft Alpha Lima Oscar Hotel Alpha altimeter 29 decimal 59 wind 051 at 12. Departure to the west approved. Cleared for takeoff runway 06. I know I got a couple of people out there who watch this. Hello, John Lindsay, if you're watching. Dick Shady. Anybody else? Whoa. We're going to be up in the thick of that stuff pretty fast. Okay, well, we're off. Gear up. So we're going the opposite way of where we need to go right now. I have to keep this thing up and At Burra Tower Beachcraft Alpha Lima Oscar Hotel Alpha Frequency Change. I need to uh, go the other way. So I will. So I'm gonna hand fly a plane until we intersect this course and the these two lines have to come together before I can go on to autopilot. I find this weather a lot more interesting than clear skies. It's pretty spectacular. The weather in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator stream live weather is pretty fabulous. I think I'm going the wrong way, by the way. I should be going towards that uh, other line. All right. Nav. And, uh, there we go. We're turning to the course now. Now the next thing I have to do is put in some vertical speed to get to our desired altitude, 12,200 feet. So we're above the weather and no ice. And you can see down here on the uh, map I can zoom into it there, so that's that's where we are. And uh, our next waypoint, UW is in about a mile. So that's it. Uh, autopilot. And uh, I don't think I have to talk to anybody. I don't 
remember if I gassed up this time around. I think I did. Go back to the cockpit and look. So what's the fuel situation? Lots of gas, not a problem. Well, this is where we could run into ice. The temperature outside, yep, 26 degrees Fahrenheit. Definitely icy weather. I wish I could provide you with some inter other entertainment. That's it until we get to Newcastle and uh, not sure how long that's going to be. I'm going to take a look at the approach chart. So, we have to be at 2200 feet here and the uh, that's the, uh, the fix for the localizer and somewhere between here and there we have to load approach is loaded ostensibly ILS and I have to arm it Makes me think of that uh, Judy Collins song about clouds. Okay, I think now we start heading in the way we want to go. I gotta admit this is pretty cool. I wish I could get uh, frequent flyer miles for all the miles I put in on the simulator. I like this plane. I like the uh, it's a single engine counterpart, the Beechcraft um, Bonanza, which is not much good for the winter because if you're going to fly in real on a Scott live weather, because uh, it doesn't have any de icing beyond the prop. And if your airframe ices up, it doesn't matter what your prop's doing, you're going to go down in reality or in virtually. So, windmills. Scotland has a lot of windmills wherever I look. Jumping out on the wing for a better view. Let's look at the chart again. TLA to Haven about 10 miles now and from Haven to Newcastle well pretty much a straight shot I think I think uh, if the weather was coming from the west uh, at Edinburgh we got run it going east
It's noisy out there. It's uh, minus 11 degrees Celsius outside. So descending through these clouds at this point, probably encounter some ice. Our next waypoint is Agbed, 37 miles. They're actually getting pretty close. I'm gonna have to get down to 2200 feet. So I'm dialing that in right now if you can see those green numbers changing. I have a physical panel that I use because turning knobs in the simulator uh, panels could, well, it just drives me nuts. It's like chasing a moving target. spend a lot of time, really too much time doing this, but it's so immersive that if I don't do it, I feel like I missed something in the day. Well, that's an interesting approach. I like that. Kind of a little less, actually really interesting, because what we're going to be doing after Apted is turning around here and doing this nice little loop before going to the runway. This gives us gives me a lot of time to get down to the uh, altitude I need to be where I need to be for the final approach. So it's nice to have that chart up where I can see it. We better start descending. And so, I think I'm going to go to 5,000. So, I'm going to go down to 5,000 feet now because. So, we're descending from 12,200 feet to 5,000 feet. And And uh, I'm going to reduce our speed because we come around that. Well, not too much. We've got that little loop to do. So, okay, we're, all right, there are top of descent. Well, I'm not sure, that's where we begin a descent. And, oh, we've already got the localizer. I better step it up here. I'd like to get down to 5,000 feet. I think we may actually be landing. I think all those loops went away. Okay, we got to get down to uh, actually 2200 feet. And I'm going to have to slow down. Because we're only six miles from Newcastle. And uh, I might miss, miss our approach entirely. I'm going to arm it now. 
and hope it works. Okay, it's armed. We've got this GS for glide slope. I think I'm going to have to go around. This isn't what I expected at all. And we're not going to make this. Nice rainbow. Well, I screwed up. We're only, we're closer than I thought. And, uh, I'm going to have to do a missed approach. Let's see if I can manage that. Otherwise, I'm going to have to hand fly it. We're on top of the airport right now, so... Okay, folks. Just missed it. I didn't realize where we were. So... And I don't know how to get the uh, missed approach. Uh, what are we doing now? No, we're going... Okay. I know what I have to do. I have to start turning back. And, uh... I'm going to have to find the airport by hand. I'm using the, uh, you see that thing on the right? I'm using the heading selector on the autopilot. I'm using the autopilot to maintain a steady altitude. We're in the rain now. And I have to go the opposite way and turn back to the airport. And uh, so this has gotten way too interesting. I'll bring up the approach chart again. And I'm really not sure where I am. But I know I have to be at 2,800 feet at, uh, out here somewhere. So I'm going to go out and turn back onto the approach, back onto the, the opposite way I'm headed, and I hope there's no terrain in front of us. I don't think there is. It's all green. Well, I screwed up, what can I say? I want to be at 2200 to intercept the localizer. If I can at least do that, I can, I think, find the runway. I'm going to go out west a little bit. So I have more room to turn back more lateral room. At this speed I should have enough distance. Whoa, I want to stay where we are altitude wise. I forgot where I was or never understood where I was. I thought there was going to be a nice holding pattern but it disappeared. There was one on my chart on my map screen Look like a nice loop around to uh, get down to the right altitude for the road for the final descent, and uh, it wasn't. So I don't know if I can catch the uh, ILS or not. We don't have the glide slope anymore indicator because I missed it. So, all I can do is reactivate the approach, and uh, I would try hand flying the plane around, but I don't trust myself. We're flying away from the airport right now. I think I'll turn back now using the uh, heading. All right, let's see if I can intersect the uh, 
approach and arm it and we'll see what happens. I'm going to watch these green lines. We have the localizer and uh, see what happens. This will be, uh, this is a learning experience. All right, got the glide slope again. We're nine miles from, I ought to be able to make this. I've got nine miles to spare. All right, there we go. They're converging nicely. There we go. Turn it on. There we go. I think I got it now, folks. This has been too exciting by half. Okay, nine miles from Newcastle. Let's get this thing out of the way. And when that GS goes green, we're on the glide slope. So I combined a bit of uh, hand instrument, hand uh, navigation with my autopilot. I've never been off the autopilot at all. And we are, we're going down. We got the, got the glide slope. Hooray for me. And uh, we're descending and we're five miles from the runway. So I'm going to put some flaps in. Because I want to land at about uh, 90 knots. Well, here we go. I don't know what uh, the visibility is down there. I'm pretty excited about this. This video is going to be a keeper. And we're at 1,600 feet descending. I'm ready to lower the landing gear. I think I'll wait. More flaps. Gear down. Green lights. And now I need a little speed. Air power. There's. Hey, there it is. Made it. And learned something new about what to do when you F up. Raining cats and dogs here. No windshield wipers. Passing about 1,000 feet. Air speed's just about right. 87 knots. Good speed. And uh, 500, she says. It's all lit up for us. So, I'm going to uh, shortly turn off the autopilot and uh, go the rest of the way myself. Gear, flaps, everything's okay. Alright, let's, let's go off the autopilot and trim down a little more power and try to stay I don't know what it might have a crosswind I don't know Right now, well, good job, Steve. That was too exciting. We 
be good to cut the throttle and break. All right. Raise the flaps before I do anything else. Let's talk to the tower and find out where we're supposed to park. Newcastle Ground, Beechcraft Alpha Lima Oscar Hotel Alpha Taxi to parking. Beechcraft Alpha Lima Oscar Hotel Alpha Taxi to General Aviation parking using Taxiway Charlie Whiskey Delta 5 Delta 6 Delta 7 Delta Delta 8 Alpha 5 Alpha Alpha 4 Bravo 2 Bravo Cross Runway 07 Golf. Does anybody Taxi understand that? Aviation parking using Taxiway Charlie Whiskey Delta 5 Delta 6 Delta 7 Delta Delta 8 Alpha 5 Alpha Alpha 4 Bravo 2 Bravo Cross Runway 07 Golf Beechcraft Oscar Hotel Alpha. That's it. That's all gobbledygook to me. But I'm going to follow the Blue Ribbon Road. That was too exciting by half. Okay, so I've zoomed in on the airport. And uh, it's amazing. All this information is available in this... Uh, Avionics system, the Garmin G1000 NXI. So we're really going a long way around for parking. Oh, turn away. I could have flown here in the time it's taken me to taxi. Usually I just uh, go wherever, but lately I've been asking them to tell me where to go. Oh, we are on the runway. That's funny. Presumably nobody's landing or taking off. So I hope you don't mind all the mindless chatter. I don't like to sit here and say nothing. And there's the parking spot, nicely marked off by these virtual green blocks that are it's like one virtual thing inside another virtual thing and there's a guy there waiting for me saying whoop go over left go left okay come ahead and stop and cut the gas and that's it well these these things aren't really there in a sim that isn't real. It's, uh, as I said, it's virtual reality on top of virtual reality. Uh, thank you very much. Quite an interesting landing. One of the more interesting I've had yet. First of all, happy holidays and good day.